at the 2023 graduation ceremony of Weifang University in Shandong, a striking scene was captured as a black student sang a Chinese song to an audience. That included many fellow black graduates in their ceremonial robes. Similarly, during the 2021 graduation of Jiangsu University of Science and Technology, the stage was notably filled with graduates from Asian, African, and Latin American countries. Historically, the typical image of international students in China has been that of Caucasian individuals from developed nations. However, this perception has significantly evolved. Chinese campuses now see an increasing presence of students from Asia, Africa, and Latin America, reflecting a broader diversity. Social media users humorously remarked on one photo, questioning if they were in Africa due to the number of dark-skinned students visible. In terms of privileges, China's higher education institutions offer international students several advantages, such as easier admissions, reduced tuition fees, scholarships, housing, and other facilities, sometimes described as supranational treatment. These benefits, however, spark ongoing debates over educational equity as they include special considerations in academic examinations, degree issuance, discipline, and social interactions. Despite these nurturing policies, the number of American students studying in China has dramatically decreased, influenced by deteriorating Sino-U.S. relations and a growing awareness in the U.S. about the Chinese Communist Party (CCP). Reports from the Associated Press indicate that currently only about 700 American students choose to study in China, a stark decline from the 25,000 peak in 2012. The COVID-19 pandemic further exacerbated this decline, with numbers dropping to less than 300 in 2022. The Wall Street Journal corroborates this downturn, noting a 97 percent decrease from the 2018-2019 to 2020-2021 academic years, leaving only 382 American students in China. However, there are now about 300,000 Chinese students studying in American universities, and the contrast is huge. This reduction in international students is attributed not only to strict pandemic control measures by the CCP, but also to harsh domestic policies and aggressive foreign postures that increasingly isolate China globally. Political tensions between China and Western countries create a sense of uncertainty and fear among potential international students. Interviews with students by the Associated Press revealed concerns about personal safety in China, especially with the enforcement of laws like the counter-espionage law. Restrictions on discussing sensitive political topics and tightened controls over speech pose additional challenges for these students. As a result, some are considering studying in more democratic regions like Taiwan, recognizing it as a viable alternative for learning Mandarin without restrictions. The gap in understanding between those inside China and the outside world is exacerbated by the CCP's strict control over information, internet censorship within China, and the undermining of democratic values in Hong Kong highlight for young Americans the stark differences between China and freely democratic countries. Perry Link, a distinguished sinologist at the University of California Riverside, has extensively studied the historical impact of CCP policies. He points out the significant loss of life during events such as the land reform movement, the Great Leap Forward, and the Cultural Revolution. Link also highlights how, during the 1989 Tiananmen Square incident, the CCP directed violence against students and civilians. These critical historical events are largely unknown to Chinese students because of state-led educational indoctrination. In China, individuals are exposed from a young age to an educational system often criticized for its indoctrinating nature. As a result, many Chinese are unaware of certain historical events, and it is even less likely for foreign students to learn about these aspects of China's past. Internationally, there is a growing recognition of China as a closed and deceptive society controlled by digital authoritarianism. The contrast between Taiwan's openness and Hong Kong's shift from a democratic system to one completely under the control of the CCP illustrates this starkly. These vivid examples help the world understand the realities of China, leading many Americans, particularly the youth, to see a lack of hope in the country. Previously, American students might have been attracted to China by its economic growth and potential business opportunities. However, with the current tensions between the U.S. and China and the downturn in the Chinese economy, 
Their outlook has soured, reducing their interest in pursuing opportunities there. Chinese authorities place high importance on the treatment of international students. Over the years, universities across China have proactively offered superior academic and living conditions to foreign students. However, controversy is not uncommon. For instance, Shandong University and Nanjing University faced backlash for initiatives like the study buddy programs, which suggested female students accompany international students, sparking strong opposition from the student body. Recently, Nanchang University of Aeronautics and Astronautics invested 140 million yuan in a project to build dormitories for international students, leading to strong dissatisfaction and protests from Chinese students at the university. Images shared by students highlighted the disparity. The international students' dorms were well-equipped double rooms, while the Chinese students were accommodated in smaller, sparsely furnished bunk beds without renovations. Students criticized the university for excessive spending, and the administration responded by banning discussions on the subject and shutting down the school's chat software. Some students pointed out that while the government emphasizes national pride and discourages undue admiration of foreign cultures, the school's actions suggest a preference for foreign students. For instance, a financially disadvantaged but academically excellent local student was unable to afford tuition and received no support. Yet funds were available to create comfortable accommodations for international students. Some citizens argue that these funds could be better spent supporting impoverished domestic students and cultivating local talent. The inability of China to produce world-class scientists is partly attributed to the allocation of limited resources to international students, a policy seen as unfair to Chinese children. This year marks the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the U.S. Xi Jinping sent a letter to his friend Sarah Landy in the U.S. announcing plans to invite 50,000 American youths to China for educational exchanges over the next five years. This initiative has raised various concerns and questions. Firstly, there are widespread concerns that such a large-scale initiative would require a significant amount of funding. Which could be more effectively used to address domestic poverty issues in China. Secondly, Xi Jinping's correspondence with Sarah Landy, who is not a political figure but rather an ordinary citizen, has raised some eyebrows. Observers suggest that this might indicate the CCP's ongoing struggle to find appropriate channels for communication with the United States. Given the current tensions in U.S.-China relations and the clear stance of the American public towards the CCP. Prediction suggests that Xi Jinping's plan may not achieve its intended impact. On February 16th, an article titled "Xi Jinping's Recruitment of America's Young" was published in Ebao Online Publication, warning American society of the sinister motives behind this Chinese initiative. In January 2024, at least five American student groups completed their trips to China. The article highlighted that these complementary trips to China were different from typical study abroad programs, as they appeared designed to instill CCP favorable ideas among American youth. Particularly striking was the uniformity of the American students' itinerary in China. Their schedule included exploring Chinese culture and cuisine, visiting high-tech enterprises like Tesla factories and the China National Gene Bank. And observing large-scale infrastructure projects led by the CCP by offering these free trips to American students, the CCP aims to cultivate proponents of its regime from a young age as part of a broader united front strategy. The CCP intends for these American students to experience what it claims to be the superiority of its social system. The selectively curated visits are part of a broader indoctrination effort, showcasing only what the CCP wants them to see. However, the atrocities the CCP seeks to conceal, such as the detention of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, violations of World Trade Organization rules, the dismantling of democracy in Hong Kong, and the suffering of impoverished Chinese citizens, remain hidden from these students. It is important to recognize that China's policies targeting foreign students are deeply connected to its international relations strategies. Since Mao Zedong's era, the CCP has relied on forging alliances with countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America as part of its foreign policy. 
This approach aims to counterbalance the influence of the Soviet Union in the United States and involves a strategy known as United Front Diplomacy. During the 1970s and 1980s, the Chinese government implemented a long-term investment strategy to fund students from third world countries, especially from Africa, to study at Chinese higher education institutions. Many of these students, who came from influential backgrounds in their home countries, often returned to become senior officials or diplomats, contributing to China's expanding international influence. In the 21st century, the influx of foreign students has been seen as a way to extend China's soft power and cultural influence globally. This approach has also been instrumental in disseminating Chinese ideologies and values, with the Chinese government and the CCP supporting scholarship programs to cultivate the next generation of elites in African nations. At the Johannesburg Summit of the Forum on China, Africa Cooperation in 2015, Xi Jinping committed to providing 50,000 government scholarships and 50,000 training opportunities to African nations over the next three years. He also planned to invite 2,000 Africans to China for educational exchanges. With the advancement of the Belt and Road Initiative, China's higher education strategy has shifted accordingly. In 2017, foreign students from Belt and Road countries constituted 64.85% of all international students in China. Secretary General of the China Scholarship Council, Liu Jinghui, acknowledged in an official speech that the expansion and preferential policies had a political motive. It was to compete with Western nations for students from Asia, Africa, and Latin America, and to foster pro-China sentiments in these regions. During the 19th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party in 2017, Minister of Education of China Chen Baosheng stated that by 2049, China aims to be the most sought-after study destination in the world. Each year, about 10,000 African officials attend short-term courses in China in fields such as agriculture and economic development. The CCP establishes these connections with African government officials to further its political aims of expanding its influence. In recent years, the CCP has invested heavily in bringing a large number of African youths to China for study while providing them with substantial living expenses. This initiative is entirely aimed at enticing them to become agents for the CCP in Africa. Former Vice Minister of Commerce Wei Jianguo, in his book Africa, A Lifetime of Memories, proposed a plan to attract African students to China with a fund of $60 billion. This plan includes providing 50,000 study slots, 50,000 training opportunities, and a training program for 1,000 elite African talents. Reports indicate that a significant amount of funding will be necessary for the planned construction of 300 international vocational schools by 2025. Assuming each school enrolls 900 African students, the total number of international students across China could reach 270,000. Given the financial outlay required per student, which historically averages about 200,000 yuan annually, the total cost for vocational international students nationwide could amount to 540 billion yuan annually. It's noteworthy that many children in China's impoverished regions have never even left the mountains where they live. The CCP has not funded these children to even visit county or provisional cities, let alone travel abroad, a practice that has not garnered public approval. While subsidies for international students are increasing, tuition funds at Chinese universities are also rising. Furthermore, last year, posts related to this topic were frequently deleted from local Chinese websites, indicating the CCP's reluctance to hear the people's discontent. This has confirmed the CCP's differential treatment of domestic and international citizens. Some foreign students not only have their tuition fees waived, but also receive annual subsidies of up to 100,000 yuan. There have also been rumors this year suggesting that subsidies at Tsinghua University for foreign students might even reach 200,000 yuan annually. Interestingly, these subsidies are reportedly available only to non-Chinese-looking students, such as Black or Caucasian individuals, particularly excluding those of Chinese descent. 
The CCP's severe treatment of its citizens sharply contrasts with its favorable treatment of foreigners. This disparity is in stark contradiction to the CCP's public declarations of always prioritizing the welfare of the people and its propaganda claims of serving the people and putting their welfare first. How much longer must the Chinese people endure a regime that has misrepresented them for so many years? The reluctance of foreign students to come to China is partly due to their bleak outlook on the country's development prospects, indeed a major concern for the CCP. As the CCP intensified control, the Chinese economy slumped, prompting foreign companies to adjust their operations in China, with some even cutting teams specifically handling Chinese business. In 2023, major global corporations, including Japan's Canon and South Korea's Samsung, withdrew from China, affecting tens of thousands of Chinese employees. Many Japanese companies have recently become pessimistic about China's economic outlook and are concerned about the CCP's impact on supply chain. Companies like Yaskawa Electric Corporation, Asahai Kaigo Co. Limited, Renesas Electronics, and Honda Motors have indicated plans to expand operations in the U.S. or have already announced investment plans. Japanese executives and analysts note that while China was once seen as a market brimming with opportunities, their view has now shifted to caution. A survey in January revealed that nearly half of the Japanese businesses operating in China did not invest or had reduced their investments there last year. Part of the hesitation is due to economic security risks. Last year, a Japanese employee at Astella's Pharma was arrested by Chinese authorities on suspicion of espionage. Additionally, many companies are pessimistic about the demand within China in its weakening economy. A survey conducted by the Japan External Trade Organization in November last year showed that for the first time, the proportion of Japanese companies planning to expand in China fell below 30%. In contrast, those hoping to expand in North America exceeded 50%. The exodus from the Chinese market in recent years includes not only Japanese firms, but also American, German, and even Chinese private enterprises. According to data released by China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange, foreign direct investment liabilities in 2023 amounted to only 33 billion U.S. dollars, a dramatic 82% drop from 2022. This highlights a lack of confidence among foreign investors in the Chinese market and reflects the challenges the Chinese government faces in attracting more overseas investment. In the past three years, the pace of foreign companies withdrawing from China has accelerated due to geopolitical influences and conflicts between Western and Chinese values. Specifically, political and value conflicts have led to economic decoupling and foreign enterprises feel a lack of security in China, where party decisions outweigh market economics and legal norms. This withdrawal of foreign capital has also led to persistently high vacancy rates in top commercial buildings in major Chinese cities. According to China's Sai Xin Media, in the final quarter of last year, the vacancy rate for commercial buildings in Beijing climbed to 20.4%, the highest in nearly 13 years. In the first quarter of this year, the rate remained high at 20.2%, exceeding the psychological market threshold of 20%. It's noteworthy that in recent leasing transactions, over 94% of the demand came from domestic Chinese companies, with foreign businesses accounting for less than 6%. This indirectly reflects the ongoing withdrawal of foreign capital. The continual decrease in foreign presence and capital is a troubling sign for China, which relies on foreign investment to stimulate market vitality. Signs of societal regression have worsened in recent years. First, the reduction in foreign investment has led to fewer job opportunities. Recent data show that the youth unemployment rate has reached 20.4%, making it a focal point of societal concern, indicating that one in every five graduates is unemployed. Secondly, the withdrawal of foreign capital has hurt China's development. Foreign high-end talent is crucial to China's technological and technical advancements in areas like semiconductors, aerospace, artificial intelligence, and software. Developing these high-end industries enhances national competitiveness, and foreign experts' involvement helps accelerate the technological ecosystem's construction. 
However, there are complaints on social media abroad about China's lack of inclusiveness towards foreigners and inconveniences in tourism. Last year alone, the number of foreigners entering Shanghai decreased by 32%. 